God bless you richly in Jesus' name. Welcome to the Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional. Welcome in Jesus' name. It is well with you. I'm sure you have been having a wonderful time. Let's pray as we go along with today's teaching. Father, we thank you because you are such a great and a wonderful God. We bless your name for your mercy, grace, and power. Thank you for everything you have been doing in our life. We appreciate you. We love you. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. As we go along today, Holy Spirit, lead us by your power. Let your presence go with us. At the end, let only your name be glorified. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. And amen. Once again, welcome to the Mountain Top Life Daily De Devotional. We go along today. We are looking at the topic, Enjoy Your Old Age, part one. Enjoy your old age. <laughs> it's important. You enjoy your old age. And uh, when you start growing and when you get to a level where there is time for everything, at the beginning of life, you struggle, you do a lot of things. After all the struggling, after, after everything, there will be a time when you will reap the fruit of your labor. When you begin to enjoy what you have labored for, what you have struggled for. That's the old age. You enjoy your old age. Let's look at the memory verse. Memory verse is found in the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 31. Proverbs, chapter 16, from verse 31. The hurry head is a crown of glory, if it be found in the way of the righteous. The holy head is a crown of glory if it be found in the way of the righteous. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 31. The holy head. Wonderful. What is holy? What does it mean? What is the Bible talking about here? It's talking about a grayish head. A grayish head. You see, in the Bible, it is connected to old man or old age. So, it is talking about uh, a white or a gray head, a white or a gray head of the elderly person. When somebody gets old or you grow old, definitely the, sometimes the hair will change to what you call the white one or the gray one. So, if God gives you this kind of grace, it is a crown of glory, a wonderful crown of glory. I pray for somebody, may you live long and live well in the name of Jesus. A good amen from somebody. Amen. Amen. Motivational quote. It is not how long you live that matters. It is not how long you live that matters, but how much of your impact how much on your of your impact on others that is more important what can people say about you how many people have you touched as your life touched how many people can give testimony about what you have done or what god has used you to do for them that one is more important so it is not how long you live that matters but how much of your impact on others that is the motivational quote and then the prophetic word for today is a prayer i need to pray for somebody i pray you will not pass through this life without a meaningful impact in the name of jesus you will not pass through this life without a meaningful impact in the name of jesus meaning that you will not live a useless life you will not live a life without impact will not live a life without meaning that will just go like that that will not be your portion in jesus name the fire scripture hmm. in the book of psalm 92 we read it from verse 10 to 15 psalm 92 from verse 10 to 15 let's go gently and i would like you to follow me as we go he said by but my horn Shall thou exhort like the horn of an unicorn? I shall be anointed with fresh oil. 
My own shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. My eyes also shall see my desire on my enemies. Um, and uh, my ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. That is the prayer for somebody here in Jesus' name. Look at verse 12. He said, the righteous shall flourish like palm tree. Mm. It shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. What a wonderful growth. Flourishing like palm tree. Verse 13 now says, Thou shalt be planted in the house of the Lord, shall flourish in the courts of our God. Shall flourish in the courts of our God. Verse 14 says, They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. Bring forth fruit in old age. Meaning that, some people's life can be very fruitful. Even at old age, you can now look back and see what God has done. You look back and see the reward of the Lord, the blessing of the Lord all over your life and what God has used you to, to become. They shall be fat and flourishing. Verse 15, where we are going to end, is it to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. There is no unrighteousness in him. See, this message is not only for the elderly people. It's not only for the elderly ones. The young people should still please, should still please stay tuned and listen very well. Those who are young people who desire to live a fulfilling old age, they too should listen to this very wonderful teaching. It's also going to benefit them. In fact, it will even benefit them more. Because when you know what to do at the youthful age, you will now know how to plan for your old age. It is one thing to be old and uh, it is another thing to enjoy somebody's old age. I pray that you will not live through your you will not live through your old age years in shame and regret in the name of Jesus. A louder amen from somebody. However, in order to enjoy your later years, it is advisable that you lay a good foundation for your old age. Prepare a good foundation for your old age. Are you there now? Whether you are now old or you are still coming up, it's important because you need to look back and ask for the grace to correct your mistake. And not only that, and to make your remaining years on earth with, to make it a worthwhile kind of years, to make it worthwhile. You see, we just read this scripture now, Psalm 92, and then we can pick different kinds of growth in that verse that we have just read, from verse that 10 to verse 15. He said, my own shadow exalt like the own of an unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Meaning that you can grow in the anointing with fresh oil. Somebody can grow in the anointing with fresh oil. Meaning you are growing in the Lord. God is blessing you. He's increasing you. He's making you to be a vessel unto honor. To be a blessing unto people. Increasing the anointing. So that whatever you say here on earth is also acceptable. It's, it's accepted in heaven. And whatever you bind here is bound in heaven. Whatever you lose here is also losing heaven. The anointing is there to do wonderful work for the Lord. You continue to grow in it by reading your Bible, by praying and do oh, so many other things. You can grow in the anointing and also in fresh oil. Number two, somebody can grow flourishing like palm tree. Grow flourishing like what? Like palm tree. I don't know whether you have ever seen a palm tree or you have ever taken time to study the life, I mean, the life of a palm tree, the growth of a palm tree. A palm tree itself is a wonderful tree, wonderful tree that we need to study because everything about palm tree, they are all useful. There is no useless part in palm tree. We are going to go on a short break. When we come back, we continue from where we stop. Please don't go away. We'll be right back. God bless you. 
when the things that you do are backed up and secured by open heavens, prosperity and security are bound. It's the September edition of Power Must Change Hands. Team, my business must prosper. My career must prosper. Part 2. Dr. D.K. Olukoya, the General Overseer, Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries, will be ministering live from the Prayer City. Kilometer 12, Lagos Ibarden Expressway, Nigeria. 7 September 2024, 0700 W80. This event will be made available in all our social media platforms. Don't forget, Free to air MFM television on IS20. The September edition of PMCA. My business must prosper. My career must prosper. Part 2. Bring to this meeting any material or symbol representing your work and career, using them as a point of contact. Come to this meeting with great expectations, believing God that it is done. Jesus is Lord. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries. Surely the Lord is here. Welcome back. We are still looking at enjoying your old age, the first part of it. I was telling you from the Psalm 92, which where we read uh, from verse 10 to 15, that um, one can grow in the anointing with fresh oil, increased anointing that is becoming more useful for the Lord. And God is using you mightily to be a blessing to the people. The second one we mentioned before we went on break, you can grow flourishing like what? Like palm tree. Like I was telling you, palm tree, they are excellent source of uh, oxygen. Very wonderful tree. And uh, when you look at palm tree, the presence purifies the air in the environment. Palm tree, everything about it, I was telling you, is, can be very useful. Locally, in our place, the leaves of palm tree, they are very useful. People convert it to groups, which can be used to sweep. The palm kernel is a wonderful oil material where you can get different kind of oil and different kind of blessing from it. The liquid inside the palm tree can also be very wonderful. And the stems can be used to ignite the fire for cooking. So everything about palm tree is useful. It means that you grow blessed and not only that, you now become a blessing to others. Somebody can also grow in righteousness and in the fear of the Lord. You can grow in righteousness and in the fear of the Lord. Meaning that you are still doing the right thing. You are growing according to what the scripture expect you to be expect from you you are growing according to the word of god in righteousness shall thou be what exalted god is helping you growing in righteousness that is in the way of living a holy life and being a good person in the way of the lord and also having the fear of god the bible says the fear of god is what it is the beginning of wisdom as you go in the fear of god you are increasing in wisdom you are increasing in every good things of life. Somebody can also grow to bear good fruit. A lot of people grow and there is no impact. But somebody can grow and bear good fruit. Like I used to sell and tell people, the number when you say you are successful, how do we measure your success? It's when we look at the people you too you have made to become successful. That is when we can say you are successful. So if you have not made anybody to become successful, you can't boast that you are a successful person. It's not the money, it's not the car, the buildings, everything that you have gotten that is counted as success. What impact have you made to people here on earth? How many people can say, yes, this man, his life has impacted me. And that's the fruit we are talking about. When you grow and bring forth, bear forth, bring forth fruit, that is good growth. Somebody can grow fat and flourishing. Another way of growth. You can grow to bear good fruit. You can also grow. Uh, people grow horizontally. That is, they grow in, in a lengthy, horizontally way. That is, uh, people can even grow fat and get bigger and bigger. 
but not all that kind of growth are so useful because if you grow too fat, you become a problem to your body. To your body. So it's important that when you grow, you can also grow vertically. That is when you grow, that is with wisdom. God has impacted something in you, in your brain, that will be a blessing to people and to people, uh, people around you. Somebody can grow like a cedar in Lebanon. That is, you have a kind of growth that can stand out. A cedar in Lebanon stands out. You grow in a way that people will know that this person is a blessing to his generation. And that is the kind of growth I pray for somebody. Somebody can also grow in the word and also in the knowledge of the Lord. You can grow in the word of the Lord by prayer, by understanding the scripture, and by doing what the scripture wants you to do, and also in the knowledge of the word. You can also grow without making impact. That will not be your portion. People just come, leave, and nothing to say about them. They just come like that and go. No impact. Nobody can say good things about them. In fact, you still have some people who grow as a terror to mankind. They grow as a terror to mankind. People remember them for the evil they do and the evil they did. So that is another kind of growth. We have a lot of people now, their presence, even in the environment, is a torture to the people around them. It's a problem to the people around them. How people wish they are not even around. There are many of us who are looking at me now, where you are, where you are working, a lot of people wish that if you, even if you are not around, that would be good for them. It's not really that you are bad, but we still have people who are bad, who are very, very wicked. Witches, the Bible says, suffer not a wish to live. Witches and wizards, they are terrible people among us. They live to bring terror to mankind. That should not be your lot in the name of Jesus. Somebody can now grow in the fear of the Lord. Like the scripture has rightly said. So there are examples of uh, men and women in the scripture who live fulfilled lives and they died fulfilled and then they are all assured of eternity with Christ because there are also living examples of fathers in faith who knows it was time to be with the Lord and confidently they said farewell to the old world. They have lived a fulfilled life and people they honor God in their life. They can say, yes, this man has come, he has touched the life of people and people can say good things about them. I always look at any testimony, any time some people, they, uh, they bear farewell to the whole world and people are giving testimony about them. Listen to what people say about some people. Uh, it is true that some people, well, people will not want to say that they are terrible. But when you listen to some genuine people some genuine testimonies about some people, you will know that they have come and they have touched the life of people and they have lived a fulfilled life. I pray your old age will be a blessing and even a blessing to yourself and to the people around you. In the same way, some are unhappy when they see what happened in their early lives or in their early years. And their older years, they are full of pain, they are full of regret. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. A lot of people regret their lives at old age. Somebody was sharing with me, the woman was telling me that, well, she is thanking God for everything God has done for her. God has helped her. God has blessed her. But she had one regret, just one regret. Anytime she remembered that, she at old age now, she had one regret. Anytime she remembered that, she always feels sad. I say, what is that problem? What was the regret or what is the regret? The woman said, the only regret she had in life was the husband she married at a younger age. So when they got married, the man was nice, very handsome, very good. But now she's now regretting that she has married a devil, that the man is wicked, is terrible, even though they have children for themselves. But uh, the woman is not happy at all. Looking back, seeing the kind of man she got married to at the earlier age, and now she's regretting that man now. That is what we are talking about. At the younger age, a lot of people have made some terrible mistakes. 
and at the old age is counting and reflecting in their life. I pray you will never regret at your old age. What is that thing you have done at your young, your youthful age and you are now regretting now? Are you like that woman who talked with me? You are regretting the kind of man you married, the kind of woman you married, and you wish you never would have gotten close to that kind of person in life. And no problem. You can still be happy at old age. The Lord will see you through and the Lord will help you in the name of Jesus. I want you to know there is an adage that um, uh, people used to say that as you lay your bed, so you lie on it. As you lay your bed, so you lie on it. It's time for a great, it is true to some great extent. The way you lay your bed, you lie on it. It's true to some great extent, but notwithstanding, at the end of the day, you can still pray for God to help you out. You will have how I want to ask somebody, how well have you lived your life, your longer years? That is in preparation to enjoy your old age. What are those mistakes that you have done too that you are now regretting? But I know you can easily correct those mistakes now because you can correct the sins of the past and repent of them now and also the relationship that has wounded your heart, you can still make some amendment. It is never too late. The Lord will help you. We go on a short break. When we come back, we continue from this enjoying your old age. God bless you. Don't go away. We'll be right back. When the things that you do are backed up and secured by open heavens, prosperity and security are bound. It's the September edition of Power Must Change Hands. Team, my business must prosper. My career must prosper. Part 2. Dr. D.K. Olukoya, the General Overseer, Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries, will be ministering live from the Prayer City, Kilometer 12, Lagos Ibadan Expressway, Nigeria, 7 September 2024, 0700 WAT. This event will be made available in all our social media platforms. Don't forget, Free to air MFM television on IS20. The September edition of PMCA. My business must prosper. My career must prosper. Part 2. Bring to this meeting any material or symbol representing your work and career, using them as a point of contact. Come to this meeting with great expectations, believing God that it is done. Jesus is Lord. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries. Surely the Lord is here. Welcome back. We are still looking at enjoying your old age. Uh, I was telling you before we went on break. How well have you lived your younger years in preparation to enjoy your old age? What are those mistakes, those mistakes that could still be corrected now? There are some mistakes that could still be corrected now. If it is possible, please try and do the correction. What are those sins to be repented of now? And what are those relationships to be mended now? And many, many more. Check your life and see what you can do so that your life can be a blessing at old age. You see, life cannot be enjoyed in isolation. There is no way you can enjoy life in isolation. Imagine, if you are the only one on earth, how will you enjoy this life? Imagine you are the only one on earth. You need to wear clothes. Somebody will need to prepare or make the clothes for you. You need a shoe. You need to eat. Somebody will need to prepare the food. You need to go somewhere. The machinery you are going to use, somebody will need to prepare and make it for you. How will this life be when you are the only one that is here? So meaning that there is nobody that can live in isolation. It is not possible. So there are things you will need that somebody else will be, will be the one to provide them for you. So in your old age, 
should be a God-loving and people-loving person. Be a God-loving and people-loving person. You see some people when they grow, grow, grow older, that's when you see them praying more. And you discover, why are they praying too much? Or why are they praying so much? Ah, someone will tell you that, well, you know the number of years I'm going to spend now, they are not up to what I've spent in the past. So let me just be preparing so that uh, I'll make my, I'll make some correction, make my way clear and upright and righteous before God. So that when I get to God, God will welcome me and call me a righteous person and keep me in eternity. Well, at old age, try and be a God's loving person. Not only that, and also be people's loving person. Love people and love God. And hence, your salvation is non-negotiable. You need to maintain good health physically. As you are getting older now, maintain good health physically. You need to live well and keep yourself strong and be mentally and emotionally balanced. Mentally and emotionally balanced. There are many people, sickness write the last chapter of their life. Problem write the last chapter of their life. I pray for you. The enemy, sickness, problem, infirmity, diseases, you know, write the last chapter of your life. You need to be full of life and be ready to share the story of your life's journey with the younger ones. Just to correct the people who are coming, to also direct them, to guide them, and also inspire them. You need to be a godly counselor and do not hesitate to share your failure too. Because from that failure you are sharing, one or two people can also learn and make amendment. You can share your failure so that others can learn from it and avoid making the same mistake or error in their lives, which you had made. Because you need to become a book for people to read so that people will read good things about you to make a positive impact. Remember, you have only one life to live. And remember that life, you live it in a wonderful and a glorious way. I pray that it will be a good book that people will read and then they will be able to be blessed by the time they read the kind of book you have made in life. The Lord will help us and see you through. I pray for you that your old age shall be a blessing, shall be a wonder. The enemy, sickness, diseases, infirmity will not write the last chapter of your life in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can we pray these prayers before we go? Let's close our eyes. Say, I shall not live, I shall, I, sh I shall not live unfulfilled life in the name of Jesus. Pray that I will not live unfulfilled life in the name of Jesus. I will not live unfulfilled life in, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us. I'm sure God has really blessed you and touched you in this short teaching. Remain richly blessed until we come your way again. God bless you richly. Bye for now. God bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for the miracle of sleeping and waking up. I decree that today it shall be well with you in the name of Jesus. The Lord God that dwelleth in Zion will move you forward in a new way in the mighty name of Jesus. No evil shall befall you this day, neither shall any plague move near your camp. Wherever you go, the favor of the Almighty shall be upon you. Your life shall be plugged into the socket of divine favor, divine restoration, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All the evil present in this day, I bind them and I cast them out. You shall not be part of the evil that is spreading around in the name of Jesus. The Lord will make you head and never detail in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I soak the whole of this day in the blood of Jesus. I soak the whole of this day in the blood of Jesus. You are going in your coming out shall be blessings. The hand of God shall be mighty upon you. I cover you and your family with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Have a wonderful day, beloved. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen.